everybody? And I uh, mean, not quite, but we're getting there, so we might as well go ahead and say it. Uh, I, uh, I want to wish you a 2018 filled with the good things in life. Good mornings, good days, good thoughts, good deeds, good will, good news, good friends, good times, good reading, good taste, good humor, good health, good worship, and good fellowship. So that ought to serve you, serve you. well. I, I, have to, I have to tell you something. When we were here back in the spring, and I had a great time, and I look forward to being back, but when we were here in the spring, uh, you gave us each one of one of the, the mugs you give visitors. Yes. Yeah, if, if you two ladies haven't gotten one, don't make sure you get it. Don't leave without it. I'll tell you what. Um, I re I realized that these were a, a, a gift from the church, and we appreciate it very much. The, the fact is, we've acquired a variety of travel mugs as people do over the years, but we have loved these two mugs, and because of my long time acquaintanceship with your pastor. Uh, we just sort of automatically took to calling these our Randy Bennett mugs. <laughs> and any, any time we're headed off somewhere, one of us will say, uh, you've got a Randy Bennett mugs? And so I've told, told your pastor that. So thank you again uh, for a, a really well, wonderful gift um, in that. Well, have you heard about the two antennas that met on a roof fell in love and decided to get married? <laughs> Turns out the ceremony wasn't much, but the reception was great. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Just like we practiced it. <laughs> well, as I've planned, prepared, and prayed for this service, it has been my fond hope and fervent prayer that our reception of what the Holy Spirit has to say through the Holy Scriptures will be great. And in this message, we're going to look at and learn from an individual the Word of God calls a man after God's own heart and the apple of God's eye. Yes, David. Israel's great stone-slinging, sound-singing shepherd, soldier, and sovereign. But before I preach, I want to pray. Bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, your son is the Lord of life, the Lamb of God, and the Lion of Judah, whose roar we would listen for today. Help some of us to let him out of our cage of fear and doubt. We too much keep him in. For the unleashed grace of an unchained Christ would nurture an untamed faith in us that neither flinches nor fears, for it knows the battle belongs to the Lord. In whose name we pray. Amen. I wonder how many of you know that great old hymn of the church. Only a boy named David. Does that ring a bell? Let me try and sing it for you. It goes like this. Only a boy named David. Only a little sling. Only a boy named David. But he could pray and sing. Only a boy named David. Only a rippling brook. Only a boy named David, but five little stones he took. And one little stone went into the sling, and the sling went round and round. And one little stone went into the sling, and the sling went round and round. And round and round and round and round and round and round and round. And one little stone went into the air. Look, there it goes. And the giant came tumbling down. Now you know why they asked Tony to sing and not me. <laughs> and then David decapitated Goliath, demonstrating he was one young man who really knew how to get ahead. <laughs> and, and that's how David went from feeding the sheep to fleecing the creep. <laughs> okay, troops, I call you to listen for the drum roll of adventure, hear the bugle call of battle, and feel the cadence of the march. I summon you to bivouac behind the banners of battle that billow in the breeze as we marshal muster and move out on the march. For we turn to the story of that goon Goliath and the sheep herding stone slinger David. It's, it's in 1 Samuel 17, 
though rather than read it, uh, I'd like to just simply tell it to you. You're not too old to let me tell you a Bible story, are you? Yeah. By the way, any giants in your life, some fierce foe you flinch and fear to face, some sorrow, sin, sickness, or circumstance, someone, certainly sometimes Satan, why, Goliath has a whole army of giant-sized cousins, terrifying troopers that rise up against you and me, trying to meet, beat, and defeat us. There are the giants of despair and disbelief, of discouragement or resentment, of loneliness, of woundedness, bitterness, or, or brokenness, of jealousy, hostility, inferiority, impurity, insecurity, of sin, stress, shame. G grief or guilt, of, of addiction or anger, depression, pessimism, compromise, lust, fear. And what giant keeps you from attempting great things for God or expecting great things from God? Giants, so many of them and many more there are, marching in firm and frightening array. And though he was only a boy named David, just a kid with a copper-colored crop of hair, he's the Bible's resident expert on giant killing. So we turn to him for some help and hope with our own jousting with giants. For once upon a time, the fierce fighting forces of Philistia were amassed against the armies of Israel. With the Philistines camped on one hill and the Israelites on the other, all that separated them was a few hundred yards of real estate and a creek. Or maybe you call it crick. And though the Philistine army was at the time the world's mightiest and meanest military machine, all their hopes hung on their hulking hero, Goliath, of Gath. Ever heard of the cross-eyed discus thrower? He didn't set any records, but he sure kept the crowd on its toes. <laughs> <laughs> that was Goliath, as day after day he paraded down the hillside and prowled along the riverside, throwing out threats and belching blasphemies at the Israelites and their God. From across the creek, he blasted with a basso profundo that sounded like 22 out of tune tubas, double daring somebody, anybody for Pete's sake, to come out and fight him and save the time and casualties of both armies having a go at each other. He'd go one on one with anybody, winner take all. Well, Goliath was the gross, the bad, and the ugly. The all-time undefeated heavyweight champion, maker of mayhem and master of disaster for anyone who got in his lumbering way. He was as big as a tank, and when he looked at men, their stomachs sank. He was over nine feet tall in his stocking feet. His coat of armor weighed 200 pounds, plus bronze boots, leggings, and helmet. He sported a spear and a club, and out of his helmeted head peered a fearsome face that had all the markings and makings of an NFL lineman or linebacker, only twice as big, three times as strong, four times as tough, and all evil. This gorilla Goliath was for real, and the pride of the Philistines. <laughs> Thus Israel's cowering, cringing army sat terrorized in their tents and paralyzed by their panic. The only sound heard from these terrified troopers was the knocking of knees and the chattering of teeth. For 40 dreadful days, Goliath's gruesome growls and double dares exploded across the valley with chilling regularity. Then dawned the 41st day. The beginning of the end for Goliath of Gath. Some ten miles from the battlefield, an adolescent shepherd left his fields and flocks to run an errand for his father. The rosy-cheeked, red-headed runt in a family that boasted eight boys, David had three big brothers serving under King Saul in Israel's army. So their dad dispatched David with some good old home cooking for the boys. But when David arrived at the Israeli army's encampment, he stopped and stared in stunned disbelief. Fresh from the wilderness, the sheep trails, and the powerful presence of his awesome God, David could not believe the army of the Lord of hosts would behave like they were, intimidated by this, this hulking heathen. 
uh, for a teenager whose unsullied character had been nursed in the solitude of the sheep fields and whose unflinching courage had been spawned in secret acts of bravery as he fended for his flocks against wild animals, the sight before him was absolutely mind-boggling. Who was this guy Goliath that he should, could, or would tease, taunt, and torment the armies of the Most High God? And what in the world was wrong with Israel's army to let him get away with it? So David started asking questions. And when King Saul heard there was some high school kid poking around annoying the troops, he had them all to his tent. King Saul. Now, now there's a, a heartbreaking story for you. Bigger than anyone in his army and twice as strong, he's the one who should have been out there polishing off Goliath. But long years ago, after that crusty old codger of a prophet, Samuel had appointed and anointed Saul king, Saul had become impatient with and disobedient to the Lord. And over the years, Saul had grown so far from God, he couldn't seem to feel or find the Lord anymore. Saul knew good and well he couldn't face and fight Goliath without God. So the best Saul could do now was uh, put a contract out on Goliath, offering a ton of money, his daughter in marriage, and tax-exempt status for life. How's that? <laughs> to anyone who would take Goliath on and knock Goliath off. But David didn't give two hoots about marriage or money. It was the honor of the living Lord he was after. Uh, I'll take him on, called the kid to the king. Can't let you do it, said the sovereign to the shepherd. But, but your majesty, I've been tending my father's flocks. And whenever a, a lion or bear attacks the sheep, I face fight and finish him off. I can handle this filthy Philistine who dares defy the army of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the bear will deliver me from the hand of the giant. Saul smiled. David had won his heart. I tell you, David could charm the birds out of the trees. <laughs> the day would come when the girls would swoon every time he rounded the bend in his fancy uniform. One day this ruddy shepherd would be a rugged soldier and a royal sovereign that Israel would lose her head and heart over. And when Jesus, the Savior of the world, came riding into Jerusalem a thousand years later, bouncing and bobbing atop a dancing donkey, the adoring crowd would hail and honor him with the greatest title they could think of, calling him the son of David. But today, David was little more than a boy, and he had just charmed the socks off old King Saul. Saul, no doubt with bittersweet memories of his own long-gone youthful trust in God, said simply, go, and God go with you. So David went, and God went with him. But not before Saul offered to loan David his suit of armor, which was, after all, the least he could do. But David refused it, which was, after all, the best he could do. For David already had with him the weapons with which he was well practiced. His shepherd's staff and slingshot. Not to mention the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. And as David headed for the shootout at the OK Corral, he made a stop at the stream to get five smooth stones. His slingshot shot ammunition and put them in his large leather shepherd's bag. Now, you need to keep in mind that a skilled stone-slinging shepherd back then would shoot smooth stones like river rocks. They were more accurate, easier to aim, and usually they looked for stones that weighed about a pound each. A skilled marksman like David could launch one of those rocks at velocities of 100 to 150 miles per hour, faster than a major league fastball. <laughs> and add to that, the Lord pointing and powering that missile with his divine muscle, and you've got powerful possibilities. So as the young shepherd plunged his hand into the cold water to pluck out one at a time a quintet of river rocks, Goliath, out for his daily rant and rave, rumbled down the hillside and rambled along the riverside, and when he caught sight of David approaching and toting staff and sling, Goliath of Gath was aghast. 
Send a shepherd boy to fight the great Goliath? Come on, folks, show some respect. The giants went from amazement to amusement to abusement, beginning his assault with an insult. Am I a dog, he growled, that you come at me with sticks? By Dagon, Goliath cursed the name of his god. I'll butcher you to bits and feed your body to the birds and beasts. As the boy and the brood eyed each other, every soldier on either side studied the two of them. Tens of thousands of soldiers in, in long lines on both sides as, as far as the eye could see that way and, and, and that way. And they all must have gasped for breath at once as the diminutive David marched out to meet the gargantuan Goliath. No doubt the soldiers in both armies were thinking, David can't win. Well, David was thinking, I can't lose. They were thinking, Goliath's too big to kill. Well, David was thinking, Goliath's too big to miss. <laughs> they were thinking, look at Goliath's mighty sword, while David was thinking, look at Israel's mighty Lord. They were thinking, that kid doesn't have a prayer, while David was thinking, all I need is prayer. You see, they were looking at the size of the giant, and the giant was looking at the size of the boy, but the boy was looking at the size of the Lord. Amen. And then David called confidently to his fierce foe, you come against me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. As David's words echoed up the valley, Goliath started spewing obscenities, but David cut him off. This day, the shepherd shouted, the Lord will do you in. Goliath's face reddened with rage. As his hands tightened their grip on spear and sword, he took a menacing step toward the rosy-faced boy who had even more to say. And it is I who will strike you down and cut off your head and feed you and your army to the beasts and the birds. Then the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. That did it. Goliath bellowed like an outraged trumpet. But not even he could drown out David's war cry. The battle is the Lord's, shouted the shepherd, reaching into his bag for a rock. He will give you into my hands. And then David started running toward the advancing giant, loading his sling as he went, then skillfully whirling around his head until, well, Goliath never had a chance. You know what they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And guys my side love that saying. <laughs> but the last thing Goliath ever heard was the shooshing of the sling and the whistling of the stone. And the last thing Goliath ever saw after the sickening sensation of the stone striking his forehead and his knees buckling under him was the blurred image of a red-haired, ruddy-faced boy racing for him and reaching for his sword and... And David decapitated his fallen foe. And as Goliath's hell-bound soul was catapulted into eternity, it must have had the echo of David's words for a traveling companion. You come against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty, for the battle is the Lord's. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I will strike you down. That's what David said, and that's what David did. David the giant killer, and there isn't a one of us who isn't facing or doesn't face some giant or giants, some thing, someone, some circumstance, some sin, some sorrow, sickness, sadness, some struggle or situation, stress or strain or Satan himself, some giant that hinders, hampers, and harms our walk with or work for the Lord. Some giant lumbering across the landscape of our life like Goliath rumbled and grumbled through Israel, and we find ourselves nose to knee with one of Goliath's descendants. I know, believe me, I faced them and face them in my life, in my ministry, on the inner battlefields of my mind, heart, and soul. With me dwarfed in some valley, the bad news is they will defeat me every time. 
But the good news is, the bad news is wrong. <laughs> For along comes dear David, dauntless, dedicated, and determined to remind me and you that our giants can be slain. That the battle is the Lord's. That there's a God-sized answer to every giant-sized problem. That we can take them on with courage, not cowardice. With faith, not fear. And experience conquest in the contest if we'll trust in the Lord of hosts. David's God, who hasn't weakened one whit or changed one bit since David's day, who wants to fight for us, with us, and through us, so that we're doing battle not in our strength alone, but in the supreme strength of the awesome and wonderful, mighty good, mighty God. After all, we dare not joust with giants in human wisdom and strength alone, for the club of flesh can't compare or compete with the sling and stone of the Spirit. Friends, Giant slayers like us need the kind of trust in God young David showed when he plunged his hand into a cold stream, grabbed several smooth stones, and strode off to keep an appointment with the original Bigfoot. The kind of trust in God that helps us face, fight, and finish off the giants that hunt, hound, and taunt us. The kind of trust in God that enables us to carry into battle the shield of faith, the sling of the Spirit, the stone of God's power to defeat the enemy, and the name of the Lord as our battle cry with the blood of the Lamb as our banner. Giants are big, but God is bigger. Giants are strong, but God is stronger. Giants are great, but God is greater. So if you've got a Goliath in your life, start by asking the Lord to help you slay him. Pray. Get out on your knees and fight like a man. <laughs> Bow your heads, please. Oh, Lord, we, we ponder with wonder a great old story like David and Goliath. Your spirit causes the needs of our lives to strike out the flint of this scripture. The resulting spark sending a wild fire of renewed faith blazing across the dry fields of our heads, hearts, and hopes. For we, like David, have giants we need to meet, beat, and defeat. And so, awesome God, we call upon you in the name, by the power, and through the blood of your Son. We call upon you for help in gaining victory over the giants in our lives. You have all authority here. Your spirit's in charge. Satan is bound. Scripture says the weapons of our warfare are mighty in you. So as you walk among us, work within us, and wage war for us. Stretch forth your hand to work wonders, slaying giants, changing lives, helping, healing, guiding, liberating, giving hope. In the strong name of Jesus, who is the greatest giant slayer of all. I'd like to ask you to keep your heads bowed, please, as we continue in an attitude and atmosphere of, of prayer. I, I just, I want to, I want to try something here as a part of a, uh, of an opportunity for uh, personal commitment. Um, let's, let's try this. If you are dealing with a giant or some giants and feel like you would like I mean, special focused prayer upon you in this battle. I mean, I realize there's stuff here that can apply to all of us, of course, but if you are dealing with something, and uh, here is an old year is ending and a new year beginning, you would like special focused prayer for that giant. I'd, I'd, I'd like you to just stand where you are so we can pray for you here in a moment. Just go ahead and stand up. I'm going to pause, give you the opportunity to do that. Okay, we, got some, we have some folks standing. Anybody else? Okay, I'd like to, I'd like to ask then if, if the rest of you would just look up. Go ahead. You have permission to peek now. Go ahead and look up. 
We have a couple people here and a couple people here. And I'd like to ask if at least three or four people somewhere near them, or if you know one of them and want to pray with them, would just go stand by them and lay a hand upon them as we pray for them. So let's lay hands on them as we are. Uh, okay. Let's, go, let's get a few over here. That's nice. Thank you for your help. Pray, pray for them, and, uh, and uh, again too, and by extension for all of us, but we, we have four we want to focus on in particular. So let's all stand together now as, as, as I pray for them. How great you are, O oh God. You're our Savior and our Sovereign and the Shepherd of our souls. It's are bigger and stronger and greater than any giant that comes against us. There is none like you. Your mercies are new every morning. Your grace sufficient for every day. Your strength equal to every trial. Your hope stronger than every hurt. Your faithfulness endures forever. You are our hope and hiding place. Our strength, shield, and stronghold. And Lord, we come to you now on behalf of these four folks who have stood because of the desire to have special and focused prayer in their dealing with their giant. I ask you to change their hearts, heal their hurts, guard their homes, banish their fears, bear their burdens, give them victory over every giant they face and fight on the battlefield of their life. Uh, as any of them suffer some brokenness or woundedness within, perhaps deep within, whether inflicted long ago or of late, may they know the power of your deliverance and the peace that comes with your grace. And then, Lord, please guide and guard any and all of us under attack from the evil one. And surround us all with your angels to keep us safe from Satan's plans to hinder or harm us. Show us any way in which we have allowed him to gain a foothold in our life and deliver us from it. Then, Lord, help us like that apostle of old to fight the good fight. Keep the faith and finish the race with perseverance and to your glory. Grateful that your love has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who empowers and enables us. And then, Lord, in every challenge and giant we face and through a whole brand spanking new year, help us to be prayerful, faithful, helpful, and cheerful. For it is in the precious and peerless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Let's, uh, let's continue to stand together, I believe. Ladies.